Okay, the first thing we need to know with quadratic equations is just a simple, simple zero concept. And that if I'm multiplying two numbers and the product is zero, then that means that one of those factors has to be zero. That's the most important thing with solving quadratic equations. Is the, I think it's called the zero product property. Because zero times anything is zero, that means if I'm multiplying two things together and get zero, one of those factors must be zero. It cannot be anything else. Okay? So, we're going to start. Okay? The first type of quadratic equation I'm going to have is if it's factorized. And if it's factorized, that means that it's in brackets already in prime factors. And if I did expand this out, which I don't want to expand it out, but I would get a quadratic expression. I would get n squared minus 4n minus 21. So because of this rule right here, that means that I would set both of these factors equal to zero because if these two multiplied equal zero, one of these has to be zero. So what I do So what I have now is basically solving two linear equations. n plus 3 equals 0, or n minus 7 can equal 0. And using the rules of solving linear, where I take this term and move it to the other side, changing its sign, I get two solutions. If n minus 7 equals 0, then n equals positive 7. And Okay, let's look at another example where it's a factorized expression. I set each factor, and when I say each factor, that means whatever's in brackets equal to zero. So as you can tell, solving a factorized quadratic is a lot simpler than if it's unfactorized. So the equation on the left is just a two-step linear equation. I take the positive 1, throw it to the other side, making it negative 1, and then dividing by that coefficient, which is 2. You could, you could write it as negative 0 0.5 if you want to, or just leave it as a simplified fraction. And the other ex equation uh, is just a one-step linear. If n minus 5 equals 0, then n equals 5. Boom. In our third example here, this, this is a factorized quadratic as well. It's just not two binomials like this one is. So I still set each factor to zero, but when I set... That x is a factor, but when I set it to zero, it just becomes the solution. So if I have an x outside the brackets, or a 2x, or a negative 7x, or whatever, one of those solutions is at just x equals zero. And my other solution, I set up the equation. If you don't need to set that up, you can probably just work that out in your head to know that it would give you x equals negative 13. Okay, now we'll do some unfactorized examples. And the thing you need to remember is that if it's unfactorized, what we're going to do is factorize it first. The first thing we have to do. After we factorize it, we do the same thing we do here, and we just set each factor equal to zero and solve. So we'll do a couple of examples and see how we do. Let's look at the first one compared to the second one here. This first quadratic, we have a common factor, a common factor of n hiding in each term. So I factorize that out. And that's what I get, of course. And now, I set each factor to zero and solve. And I get two solutions, n equals zero, or 
n equals negative 5. The next one doesn't have a common factor, so I have to factorize in it using the opposite of expanding, where I say let two numbers multiply to get negative 28 and add to get positive 3. And the only two numbers that multiply to get negative 28 and add to get positive 3 will help us out with factorizing it. And those two numbers are positive 7 and negative 4. Negative 4 plus 7 equals positive 3, and negative 4 times 7 gives me negative 28. So now, if you don't want to set each of those factors to 0, you don't necessarily have to because they're quite easy to solve. One more example to look at is when the equation before we start out is not set to 0. So if I'm going to solve any quadratic equation, I have to have it set to 0 because of this rule right here. If it's not set to 0, I can't do my factorizing trick. So the first thing I need to do is rearrange this equation, set it to 0, and then factorize it. And that's what it looks like when I set it to 0. Negative 24 becomes positive 24 on the other side. I go to factorize it, and I look at which two numbers multiply to get 24 and add to get positive 11. And those two numbers are 8 and 3 are the only, only numbers that multiply to get 24 and add to get 11. Put in the rest of my binomials. And now I'm ready to get the solution. And the solutions are negative 8 and negative 3. Now, this was how to solve them with factorizing because all of these equations could be factorized. That's not the only way to solve quadratic equations. If it can't factorize, we have to resort to other methods. We can use a graphics calculator or we can use the quadratic formula, which is this. The quadratic formula is one of the ways that we could solve for x in a quadratic equation if it cannot factorize. But that concludes our lesson for today. That's another video.